Nothing is better. 
into dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn mourning into dancing. You give beauty for ashes. Turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn praise into garden. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only everybody today. We just want to welcome our first time guests and our online viewers. Oh, I don't know if it is just me, but it was hard getting up this morning, getting here. So whatever you're going through this morning, God knows, give it to him and just worship because ooh, this life is hard. All right. So today we will be doing communion and BGMC. If you did not get communion, please raise your hand and one of the ushers will make sure that you receive it. Um, and so BGMC is our Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge and you just bring your spare change up and you put it in. Boys or girls, the boys need help, y'all. So if you, <laughs> if you have spare change, please help them because the girls won last time. Anyway, um, won this every week time. we do have um, Praise or Size tomorrow and that is kind of like an exercise uh, type group for women only. <laughs> and we won't have none of that, <laughs> but it is tomorrow at six. And so Pastor John thinks he's gonna get in and he's not. Anyway, I got my tights ready. <laughs> oh no, we don't need Richard Simmons here. Anyway, <laughs> Wednesday night, we will have service at 6.45 for the youth and then 7 p.m. for the adults and for the smaller children and youth. We also will be having you stay in the service from now on, on Sunday mornings, because you guys need to learn what we're learning. I think it's a wonderful thing um, to stay in here. And so you guys have to deal with Pastor John. Anyway, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday night, we do have Celebrate Recovery at 6. That is a like a recovery group for any type of hang-up that you may have. It can be food, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, but come and free yourself. Well, don't free yourself. Let God free you and let us help you get freed with that. 
Um, also, we are still collecting money for t-shirts. So if you'd like a t-shirt, please let us know. It is $10. And um, once we get all of the monies and funds collected for that, then we will be submitting the order. Um, let's see, April 21st. I think that's, is that next Sunday? Yeah, next Sunday. Youth group, you wanna sing? You wanna collect offering? You wanna preach, maybe? I don't know. Go see Corey. Corey is right here. Come see her. If you have a gift, use it. That goes for adults too, but for kids, if you have a gift, use it. And then at the end of this month, we will be having um, Adult Teen Challenge come. Those are women that kind of live together in a house and it's like a recovery house. And so they're going to come and share their testimony. We are going to be having a potluck style dinner for them afterwards to bless them because they will be coming from Twin Falls. That's two hours or so. So we really wanna bless them. But then in addition with that, um, with the potluck, which we are asking people to bring some type of a salad, there's a sign up sheet in the foyer, but also, they do need toiletries and different things. There is a list on the Welcome Center as well, what they need. And so if you're willing to contribute to that, there's some pink buckets out on the table. You can just place those donations in there and I'm sure that they would greatly appreciate it. They didn't ask, but we saw the need and so we're gonna help them feel that need. And then um, I'm going to have Heidi come up and then Lisa because your women's ministry is going to teens now. Well, actually all of the ministries are going to teens. So this year, women's retreat is going to be from October 11th through the 13th. If you don't know what that is, it's all of the women in our network come together and they, we just worship, have a good time. But this year they're going to be doing an auction and that's going to go towards the compact house. If you don't know what compact house is, um, Assembly of God in Hot, Hot Springs, Arkansas has an adoption house, they have an unwed mother's house, and they also have another house for those who have been in foster care and have aged out. And they do family style meals every single day. So the auction is going to go towards getting them new kitchen equipment because I'm sure that's a lot of people to feed. And so that is something that they're going to be doing, but I'm gonna have Heidi and Lisa come up um, because this is going to be your women's ministry team. Well, hello. I was, <laughs> how's everybody doing? <laughs> um, you guys are my family, right? And uh, so um, I love coming together with uh, women. And um, I don't know what I would not would, what I would do without my church family. And so, um, but yeah, going to camp is one of the wonderful things. And women's lives are changed and we're touched. And um, it's just a great time. But it's also great that we're going to get together and do more things. You know, like once a month or whatever it is that we're going to do. Um, and because uh, you know, it's all for the glory of God, right? And in unity and love and prayer. And that's what it's all about, lifting each other up because it's an ugly world out there, right? But we can make it better because we can shine the light of Jesus, right? Wherever we go. So we can make that better. So um, I'm just thankful to be here and be a part. So thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> for those of you that haven't been before, ladies, it's a, an amazing time. And I would encourage you to start planning to come. Um, like Brandy said, it's in October. And last year was one of my first years that I've gone to. It's a retreat, but we like to call it camp, right? <laughs> we call it girls camp, women's camp, because we had such a great time in fellowship with each other. You get that time, that intimate time with God, but you also get that intimate time together as women, as mom, as, as friends, as sisters. Um, and it's just a time that you get to spend with each other and lean in on each other and lean in more to God. I mean, there you see the brokenness. We're all broken. But this is where you have women that are strong in the Lord that come alongside you, pick you up, and carry you through. And I can't tell you how much it meant to me this last year to go and see the, the fellowship that we came together as um, women here in our congregation, but you get to meet new friends. And we had such a wonderful time. The speakers were amazing because they had been praying all year through to find out, um, to ask God, you know, to, to prepare for this. And so ladies, 
we're going to be coming up with um, our team here. We're going to be coming up with some ways to fundraise, and we want to get everybody um, involved in that because it takes it takes the whole congregation, it takes the village, right, to be able to um, come together and raise money for some women that maybe can't pay for the whole thing, or some women that need the help. And there's no there's no shame in that. And we just want to make sure that everybody, all the women here, have a chance to go to camp with us. Um, we we sleep in an area where our church is together, and we get to have bunk beds. I mean, it is just like, it really is a lot of fun. And there's a lot of giggling. There's a lot of laughter as well. And so please, I just encourage you to start praying about it. Men, start praying about it for your wives um, and encourage them to come along with us. I know it's hard to leave in the, the couple of days because you're away from your husband, you're away from your family, you're away from your children, but they want a break too, moms. <laughs> so anyway, I would encourage you, if you have any more questions or anything, please see one of us, but we're gonna start planning for that. So put it on your calendar, start saving some money, and then if you need a little bit of help or you need help, please come see me. I'm, I, we're, we're gonna raise some money for that. Um, for that ministry. So, thank you. All right. Hey, I am Pastor John. I'm the senior pastor here at Westside Assembly of God, and I want to welcome you guys to the best church on the planet. Before we get back to worship, um, there are some things. I want us to celebrate a couple of things here. Number one, as we were, I was uh, talking to our deacons at our last deacon meeting. Um, in the last two years, God has blessed us tremendously. We have baptized over uh, 30 people here in the last two years. Our church has not just grown numberly, but spiritually in the last two years. Um, also, we have added seven to ten new families who are voting membership in the last two years. God is doing, and the thing that I think of is this, when he said, I will build my church upon a rock, God is building his church right here in New Plymouth, Idaho. And I always like to celebrate people when things happen, and I want to celebrate this person because I think we need to encourage our young people. Madden has just came back from Iowa where she won six out of seven wrestling meets in Iowa. Now that I've become a YouTube famous, I'm gonna hire her as a bodyguard because I can't go to the store and get a cup of milk without people. <laughs> hey, who is ready to have a good time today? As they were talking about women's retreat, and she said how fun it is. It is fun, but them beds are horrible. I'm not going to lie. Them the worst beds I ever slept in. They bunk beds. My back was hurting, and people were snoring. I'm not going to say Dave, but people were snoring that I could not go to sleep. But God did some wonderful things at men's retreat, and I'm expecting God to do it at women's retreat. Um... Also, I want to challenge you, the women in our network. The men raised $36,000 in our auction. Can y'all beat it? I, I, don't believe, I don't believe none you say because Amazon get all my paychecks. <laughs> so I want to challenge you women because this is a great cause. The, um, the house down in Hot Springs, Arkansas, they don't turn down anybody, but they only adopt to Christian families. And even if you don't decide to adopt out and keep, they don't kick you out. They keep you there. They give you education. They give you all these different things. It's a great cause. I want to challenge our women. I, we took 20-something. Can we 20-something men? Can we take 20-something women to women's retreat this year? All right. We're going to get back in worship, but before we get back in worship, we're going to do BGMC. I don't care if you boys or girls, it goes in a blue bucket today. <laughs> Let's pray, and as they go back into our song, if you guys want to come up, 
and do your BGMC. Um, as we pray, can we keep, his name is Jose, they watch online, they also come sometimes. He has had carpal tunnel surgery, there's families being attacked. Let's just pray God will lift that up today, okay? Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, we say thank you for everything you have done for us. We ask for you just to enter this place right now. We ask for you just to send your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. We ask for you to be with Jose and his family as they're watching online. We're asking for a quick healing right now of both hands. And we ask for your Holy Spirit just stir up our, our, our winds and our, our, our spirits right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better and i will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to i will make room for you
to shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. God will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. It's here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal oh, earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. It is hope for the hopeless, it's all those who stay, come sit at the table. No sorrow that heaven can cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, Still, 
it has no sorrow in heaven can do. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can do. So lay down your burden. Friday service is called Made for More, Thank and God. as Corey said, it's a very powerful song. It's very easy to get into, but Praise the one thing Jesus. that is Hallelujah. very strong about it is it says, I wasn't made to be tending a grave, but we were called by name and born and raised back to life, yes. and that's what God has done for us today. wasn't made to be tending a grave. I was called by name, born and raised back to life again. I was made for more. So why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my Go! Oh. 
Give God praise this morning, church. How many of us today can say, I know without a shadow of a doubt I was made for more? We don't have to lay down in the grave that Satan tells us that we should be shameful of our past. God has called us by name this morning. God has said you are free and redeemed this morning. God has said my blood on Calvary washed your sins away and you are called by name. And I'm going to tell you, just like I told Lazarus, it is time to come out the grave. We are made for more, church. We are made for more. Our God died for more. He died for we to get connected once again with the Savior. Can we sing this once again? Can we raise our hands? Can we give God praise this morning? Can we let God know that I know I am made for more? I wasn't made to be tending a grave. I was called by name. Born and raised back to life again. Oh, I was made for more. So why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way? I know I am yours. And I was made for more. You call out my name, so I'll sing out your praise. Hallelujah. You buried my past, I'm not going back. Hallelujah. You call out my name, so I'll sing out your praise. Hallelujah. Buried my past, I'm not going back. Hallelujah. You call out my name, so I sing out your praise. Hallelujah. You buried my past, I'm not 
was called by name. Born of a young grace has been right again. I was made for more. So why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace? It's running my way, I will lie from yours. I was made for more. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we come to you right now. We say thank you for calling us by name. Lord, as we just enter the service, Dear Lord, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to sweep to this place. Dear Lord, I'm asking you to use me as a vessel today. Thank you so much. Many years ago, you called me by name, and I answered the calling to do your work. Dear Lord, let my humble heart and my humble mind be obedient to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we got to do two things before I start preaching. We got to take offering or I'm going to get a sign in the back that says offering. And so if I can get the deacons to come forward, please, as we take our tithes and offerings. How many people know that is a form of praise? And I want you guys to really hear me. Don't get mad at the pastor when we say offering. When you get to heaven, take that up with Abraham. He the one started it. He said, I'm going to give one-tenth back to God. Could God bless me? So that's how we give our offering back to God when God blesses us. So there's going to be a line that slap Adam. There's going to be a line that slap Abraham. So you take that up with Abraham and Adam when you get to heaven. Just be obedient while you're on earth. <laughs> All right. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now. We say thank you so much for everything you have done for us. I ask for you right now in the name of Jesus to take whatever we get, stretch it as far as we can, for we could continue to be the hands and feet in this community. In Jesus' name, amen. And while you're doing that, it is Communion Sunday. This is the nastiest juice I've ever tasted in my life. And so we will not be getting these again. Um, it <laughs> yes, there's nothing wrong with it. So if you want to get your communion ready. What y'all doing? All right. If you didn't get communion, Brother Joel is handing them out. If, who, who needs some communion? And who just said, I want to be brave and do a double shot of this juice? <laughs> it won't be me. Glory to the Lamb. Dear Lord, please detach my taste buds. All right. I like to have the kids in here while we do this because, honestly, they need to understand and participate while we take the Lord's Supper. And so this is one thing for the kids. Before I release you to Kids Church, I want you guys to always remember what God has done for you on the cross. It says this, and I'm reading out of New King James Version, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. And it says, for I received from the Lord that which I was also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus in the same night which he was betrayed took bread, <laughs> broke it, and gave thanks and said, take, eat. This is my body, which I break in for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, my Lord. In the same manner, he also took the cup 
after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink. Do it in remembrance of me. Mm. For as often as you break the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dear Lord, we come to you right now when we say thank you so much for everything you have done for us. We ask for you right now just to enter this service as we just remember what you did on Calvary for us. We thank you for your selfless sacrifice, knowing that you had to die the most brutal death to get us connected back to the Father. And we thank you so much for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to release the kids to Kids Church. They about to run. That's where all the good snacks is at. So all you adults, if you want good snacks, you got to go to Kids Church. I might be there before the sermon's over. So... All right. <clears throat> this has been a. Oh, before I start preaching, I forget, you know. Um, me and Brandy are leaving today to go to our network conference. So I will not be able to get up. If you call me, it's an emergency. I will call you back. You will have to leave a message. But if you need to uh, talk to somebody, Brian and Steve are deacons. Um, on the sheet out there is their numbers and stuff like that. Feel free to get in contact with them. Um, if you really need to get in contact with me, like I said, we got meetings all day tomorrow. Pray for me. I get my best sleep during the meetings. And, um, but I will call you back. And so if you just need something, please contact Brian and, um, and Steve, and they will make sure they can answer any question that you have, and if not, they're faking it. It sound good, so you know it'll be okay. All right. Well, this week has been really weird because oh, <laughs> it's been really weird because I I thought I was doing something good. Got my sermon done early. Like yeah, I came to men's group Monday night. Say I know what I'm preaching on. Then that's not what God wanted me to preach on, and so. I switched it because there are so many things that's been happening. I, I've been talking to a lot of people, and they are just like, we, we don't know. We're going through a season in life. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to get through it, this and that. And so God really placed upon my heart to preach something today because I know everybody goes through a season in life. Can I get an amen to that? It's not always skipping through the tulips and... An uh, old pastor just said, if ifs and buts was peanuts and nuts, it would be Christmas all year. <laughs> and so God has really been placing something on my heart. And then when I woke up this morning, I'm going through my sermon at home. And then there's a point that I miss. It's not in my notes here. So I had to write it down. I had to tell Twilight, can you add this to my sermon, this and that. So I'm just making a lot of work for everybody. So hopefully I can preach this right. But if you have your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah chapter 29. We're going to start in the fourth verse. Say amen if you're there. If not, you know what I do. I got it on the screen. So, hey, it's all good. But I really want to encourage you, even though we get it on the screen. I want to encourage everybody to bring their Bibles. I don't care if it's on the phone. I don't care if it's in print. I don't care if it's on the tablet. You know, bring your Bibles because it is something about opening up God's word and reading it. All right, say amen if you're there. Amen. Say, wait on me if you're not. All right, we're going to wait because, like I said, we are a teaching church. We are a preaching church. So if you need some more time, we're going to get time. Say amen when you're there. All right, let's get going. It says this, starting verse four. This said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of all that were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit. 
take wives and beget sons and daughters and uh, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may increase there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carry away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in this peace, you will have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets, <clears throat> excuse me, in your div diviners who are in the midst deceive you, nor listen to the dreams which you have caused to be dreamed. For the prophecy falsely to you in my name, I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good um, word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I have thought towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and of hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, said the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have um, driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to, to carry away captive. Today, I want to preach on a message, what to do until you get through. As Christians, we have to be very careful when we are interpreting God's word. Without knowing the history where some of the passages come from, we don't get the full meaning of what's going on. Who can agree with that? We know what's uh, been going on during the time that the passage is written is very, very important. It would be like trying to understand Martin Luther King's I Had a Dream speech but didn't know what the Civil Rights Movement was all about. Without understanding anything of the history, we don't really understand what the passage is all about. The word of God is rooted in history of what God is trying to speak and what God is trying to do. When I was in um, seminary, I had a professor that stated there are three main events that anchor the scripture of the Bible. He said that 80 percent of the scripture talks about these three moments that really ground scripture into our hearts. If we're really not familiar with these three events, we will miss out on a lot of things that God is saying and God is doing. Rather it be in the Psalms or the prophets, rather it be in the laws or the gospel, the truth is that all of the history is rooted around these three main events. The first we should know is no surprise, it's the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, um, we cannot understand God's word unless we really understand what Jesus was doing on the cross for us. All of the prophets, when we look at it, makes their way, even in the Old Testament, they refer to the cross how Jesus was going to be born, how Jesus was going to be crucified. The gospel helps us understand the life of the one who died on the cross. And the remaining of the New Testament gives us how to walk in the resurrected light of Jesus Christ who died and rose again on the cross. The second thing that anchors in scripture is the event that happened in the second book of the Bible Exodus. It comes in the second book of the Bible that God heard and hears his people's cry. And when God hears his people's cry, he always answers when his people cry. How many people can say amen to that? 
God who will bring freedom to his people. How many people here today know there's freedom in Jesus Christ this morning? God who will show up at the Red Sea and make a way out of no way. I love when God shows up and make a way out of no way. A God that moves. He moves all of us to a promised place that he gave us. That shows us even that when we're not faithful, God is still faithful to us. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the exodus, and the third one that he said anchors everything in Scripture. This is something that happened in 597 B.C. Now, B.C. means before Christ, for you new believers. It is called the Babylon exile. Stay with me as we go through a little history lesson. It is 597 B.C., that the Babylonians, under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar, they came to the southern kingdom of Judea. At this time, Israel was split in two different kingdoms. It was the southern kingdom of Judea. He conquered it. They destroyed and captured the city of Jerusalem. And I want you to notice this. Israel would not gain sovereignty completely of Israel, the land that God promised them until 1948. So from 597 BC until 1948, they will not have complete control over the land that God gave them. This is the reason they called it exile. Not only by the destruction of Jerusalem, but they took 4,600 Jews to live in Babylon. I want you to know that the Babylon conquered the nation. They just didn't take anybody. They took the cream of the crop, the best of the best, they took 4,600 Jews to live as Babylon citizens. They were also took all the resources that could cause to rebuild Jerusalem. It was tough for the Jews that live in Jerusalem, but it was even tougher for the ones that went to Babylon to live. I want you to see at this time, there was no Fox News. There was no Newsmax. There was no CNBC. They couldn't just turn on the TV and see what was going on in Jerusalem. They had to wait to word of mouth to see what was going on. Nobody's updating their Facebook or Twitter. They had to wait until they heard by word of mouth what was going on in Jerusalem. Slowly word began to go from Jerusalem to Babylon that the city had been destroyed. The temple was burnt. They were left with a lot of questions. What about the fate of my loved ones that was in Jerusalem? What happened to my personal property? Here are people that are exiled in Babylon but they're worried about the people that are still in their homeland. To make matters worse, they're living in the enemy's land now. They are living with Babylonians, having to learn a new language. I, if anybody else speaks another language, they kicked me out of Spanish. They said I had to learn English first. And so <laughs> they, kicked me out of, they kicked me out of Spanish. I couldn't imagine learning a new language. They have to adjust to the food and the customs of the Babylonians. They had to learn new jobs in Babylonia. They have to live in a system that did not worship the same God they worship. A people sad about the destruction of the city, worried about the fate of their loved ones, and trying to adjust living in the enemy's territory. Church, the only glimmer of hope that they had, the 
only thing they could hold on to at this time. The only thing that made them feel like they can endure what they were going through came from three prophets named, oh, I don't know their names, Habai, Zachariah, oh, Lord have mercy, Zachariah and Hananiah. These three prophets gave these exiles some hope. By telling them, hey, this ain't going to last forever. The exile is only going to last for two years. They feel the people that was exiled say, hey, if you can just hold on for 24 months and some change, God will deliver you from Babylon. If you can just hold on to God for two years, you will be back in Jerusalem. It's only going to take two years. These Jews that were exiled had some glimmer of hope that it's only going to take two years. Everything was going to be all right until they get a letter from Jeremiah. Boy, Jeremiah, you always bring some good news, don't you? And it's recorded to us in chapter 29. Jeremiah writes a letter and it goes a little something like this. Y'all better not be listening to them. All them prophets. They are not speaking on behalf of the Lord. The Lord told me and I'm writing to you to tell you that it's not going to be two years. But it's going to be 70 years. It's not going to be two years, but it's going to be 70 years before the Lord will bring you out of what he had them capture into. They are saddened and sorrowful by the destruction of Jerusalem. They're worried about their loved ones, and they're trying to adjust to living in Babylon. And if that do not take the cake, they find out they got to be prisoners pretty much for 70 years. Now, the word of the Lord that came to them, the season that they're in, the struggles that they go through, the place that they're in in life, this will not pass quickly. Have anybody been there? The season in your life you wish God would hurry up and move and God act like he ain't picking up the phone, he got you on call waiting, and you wondering why this season in life would not move. He said this will not be a walk in the park. This will not change with one prayer of one promise. This is going to last for 70 years. What do you do when you find yourself in this predicament? Are you in a place in life right now that you never thought you would be in? Are you in a season that you wish would pass quickly? What do you do when you realize, baby, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get a lot worse before it gets better? It's all about to get darker, no matter how much you pray. The season that you're going through, it's going to be weighing heavy on you. What do you do when God says you have to take this journey? You have to walk through this place. And it won't be a quick walk for all you runners out there. It's going to be continuously, continuously, and continuously. Believe it or not, life has a way of putting us all in exile. You wind up in places that you never thought you'd end up in. You live in situations you never asked God for. Have you ever been in a dark place in your life and you knew it was going to be a while before you see light again? What do you do when you are waiting on God to get you out of something? What do you do when you're waiting on God to remove the yoke around your neck? 
What do you do when you're begging God to get you out of this mess that you put yourself in? What do you do when the Lord is talking, taking a sweet time, changing your circumstances and your situations in life? What do you do when God is not answering your prayers? What do you do when you feel like you're in exile? Well, I'm glad you asked this morning. The Lord gives us some advice. When we feel like we're in a season that the Lord is saying that you're going to be there for a minute, there are, there are originally three things, but now that this morning there's four things, so bear with me. There are four things that we have to do in life. The first one is we have to be productive in the midst of our predicament. God is saying, I want you to learn how to be productive. No matter what you're going through in life, you must be productive. Watch what the Lord says to them. Hey, it's going to be 70 years. It's going to be a long journey. It's going to be a long haul. It's not going to be, be taken away to you easily. This is what I want you to do. I want you to build some houses and live in them. I want you to go down to Furniture Road, get some furniture, put them in the houses. I want you to plant some gardens, contact Dean and everybody else. Come plant some gardens in the back of your house and don't just plant them. I want you to eat the fruit that you plant. Then guess what? After you do all that, I want you to find a wife. And I want you to have some kids. Now, now listen, all you young kids, this is how it used to be. You didn't have a choice who you married. Fathers. Find a wife for your son. I don't care what it looks like. Listen, boys. Fathers, find a wife for your son. See, that's how it used to be. And this is even worse for the girls. Girls, give, fathers, give your girls away to somebody. We, girls are worth more than guys. For my daughter, I can get some camels, some, 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 some sheep. We can get our, our, our little cows that we want, and we can get some lambs. For my son, I just get some brack breaking labor. That's about it. I don't get nothing for him, but a Johnny is worth gold to me. <laughs> Until she, he sees she don't do nothing, and then <laughs> he'd be wanting to return her. <laughs> and God says, have grandkids. Don't let the God says, keep doing what I designed you to do. Don't just go to Babylon and decide you're going to lay down and die. Because you're not in the environment that you think you're going to be in. Keep doing what I have designed you to do. Girls, go to the salon, get your hair done. Put on that new suit and go to work. Get dressed up. Put a smile on your face. Praise God. Do what I designed you to do. Be productive regardless what matter of life you're working into right now. I command you to increase while you're in Babylon. So when we are running in the struggles of life, don't lay down and take it. Keep on praising God and increase while you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I know you're in a dark place. I know you're in the enemy's land. I know you do not want to be there, but while you are there, I am commanding you to increase. Don't give up effort. Don't let your job predict you. You predict your job. Don't get depressed and don't want to do anything. When you are in the season that you don't want to be in, that you don't like, keep on doing what God has called you to do. Can I tell you why this is so real? 
Because when we get in the seasons of life and the places that we don't want to be in, in the season that we have not asked for, we just want to throw our hands up and let the environment predict our increase. The same folks that wrote, that they're talking to right now, that Elijah, uh, Jeremiah wrote to these folks are the same group of people that wrote Psalms 137. And if you don't know what Psalms 137 is, I'm going to give you a little breakdown right now. When the Babylons came to them and said, won't you sing one of them praise and worship songs? They said, how can we sing glory to God in a captive land? In the midst of all this, how can we sing glory to God? We're no longer in Israel. How can we praise God? God's word to them was, even if you're in a foreign land, I am not the God that just leaves you in a foreign land. If you're in a foreign land, don't mean I'm a foreign God. Wherever you are at in life, you can always praise God in a hostile situation. Church, we do not have to be in a perfect situation for him to show up, for him to put his hands on us, for him to bless us because we serve a God that is a God of increase that would go anywhere his children are at. We don't have to have perfect conditions that serve a perfect God. The Bible says, that he pe prepares a table before my enemies. So to me, I am feasting in the presence of the people who hate me. Let me give you, in the Pastor John's version, when it's all said and done, do you, baby? I know you don't want to be here, but do you, baby? I know folks are rising up against you, but do you, baby? I know there are folks talking behind your back, but do you? I know there are people plotting against you, but do you? You got to get up. You got to call on the name of the Lord and God will cause you to increase in front of your enemy. Be productive in spite of your predicament. And I'm glad it was a few amens because it's going to be real quiet right here on point number two. Not only you need to build houses, have kids, plant some gardens, and also uh, have grandkids, but he says, I want you to pray for the ones who persecute you. Let me be honest with you. Your pastor got a problem with this. I don't know. You're right. I'm petty. <laughs> I got a problem with this. See, when we look at verse 7, I want y'all to see, he said, have a prayer meeting for Babylon. <clears throat> I want you to call to the Lord for your enemies. See, I know you guys are more saved than I am. Your Bibles are bigger than me, but bigger than mine. The reason it's this big, because I got to have the super giant print because I'm blind. See, this is a tough part of me. See, my instincts tell me when people have done me wrong, I'm going to do you wrong. See, there's a part of me that says, if you push me, I'm going to push you back. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and I know what some of y'all are thinking. Well, Pastor, don't the Bible says it's a person slap you, turn the cheek and give them the other cheek? See, it depends what day they slap me on. I ain't going to lie, you catch me on the wrong day. I believe in playing on hands, and some hands are going to be laid up on your face. You're going to get slapped right back. 
I'm being honest here. Can I be honest from the pulpit? If you catch me on the wrong day, you might find the BC version of Pastor John. Don't let this pulpit fool you. My instinct says, if you cuss at me, oh, I know some words that's not in the Bible. I know to use them very well. You might get speaking in tongues back to you. My wife's like, go on. The Lord says, I want you to pray for the people that have done you wrong. Now, this is the issue that becomes deep. What they, what they couldn't understand was this. That everything that happened from the destruction of Jerusalem to being exiled was by the divine design of God. We need to read the history. They did not conquer Jerusalem because their army was bigger and better than Jerusalem's. They conquered Jerusalem because God said this, the Babylonians was my tool in my hands and I used them to turn Israel back to me. I'm using them to get you right. I'm using your enemies to turn you back to me. I'm using your struggles to wake you up, to you to realize that I am the God of purpose. You need to come back to me. If the destruction of Jerusalem is the divine design of God, then so was the exile of the Israelites. 460 4,600 Jews would live 70 years with their enemies. Here's what we don't like about God. God will sometimes call and demand you to connect, connect you with a person you rather live without than work with. You ever had them people in your life that you wish would just go away? <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Don't look around. Look at me now. Have you ever had them people in your life that said, like, can't you just please find another job? Don't you want to live in Boise? Oh, my fault. Boise. Country bunking people, my goodness. <laughs> Don't that church down the street got room for you? Come on now. Don't, don't act like you always happy to worship with somebody. Or am I the only sinner in here? <laughs> yep, yeah, but by divine design, the Lord will connect you with people that aggravate you. God said that I am going to make you work with folks that get on your nerves. I am going to connect you with people that aggravate you. I'm going to hook you up with a crazy deranged cousin and they ain't going nowhere. That messes us all up because our prayer is always goes something like, God send them somewhere else. God said, no, I'm going to connect you in this season because I need to, you to get how to learn to pray for your enemies. See, I knew it would get quiet on this point because our prayers go like this. Lord, lift me, Lord, fix me, Lord, bless me, Lord, give me this, Lord, give me that, Lord, heal me, Lord, do this for me, Lord, I want this, Lord, I want that, and Lord, thank you and amen, and we run out the door. God is saying we have to learn to pray for the ones who hurt us. Because until you learn how to pray for them, you will not have peace for yourself. God says it's only when they're at peace 
you're going to be at peace. See, here it is. Whatever you want for you, you got to pray for them to have. If you want to be whole, you got to pray for them to be whole. If you want to have peace, you got to pray for your enemies to have peace. God understand the most of people that cause trouble in your life do not have a problem with you. They got a problem in another area of their life, but they're taking it out on you. So God is saying, if you want peace for yourself, you got to pray for peace for them. You have to pray that the peace will follow the issues. You have to pray for when they get another attitude to bring to you. We have to learn to pray for our enemies. This is your homework for the night. I double dog dare you. If someone is giving you hell in your life, go to your knees and pray for peace for them. When you pray and ask God to be good to your enemies, ask God to bless you those who hate you. Ask God to forgive those who have done you wrong. God says when you start praying like that for them, watch what I start doing in your life. Watch me be good unto you. Watch me open up doors for you. If you learn to pray for them, everything you pray for them, I will deliver to you. Be productive in your predicament, pray for your persecutors. And now I got to do my handy dandy sheet because I had to add this this morning. Number three, watch out. Protect yourselves for frost prophets. And we got to understand something here. The three prophets that I can't name because their name is too long. Were they prophets in Israel? Were they good men? Yes, they were. were they, did they do God's work in Jerusalem? Yes, they did. So when we look at false prophets, false prophets don't always mean that somebody is possessed by the devil, someone's doing this, someone's doing it. That. That's not always false prophecy. False prophet that I'm talking about is this. You giving me a word without hearing from God. That could be a false prophet. I'm at the time in my life, I don't need your opinion no more. I'm 50 years old. I got enough opinions of my own. And half of them are not right. But when you come to me, I want you to say I've heard from God that you're supposed to do this. I don't want you, and listen, 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 and I mean this very well. Married people and people in relationships, quit taking advice from single people. They single for a reason. All right, that's my relationship thing, and I'm going to move on. Quit taking advice from people that have no kids how to raise your kids. I want to hear someone say, I heard from God in your life. How do we know false prophets from people that heard from God? Prayful people don't go on uh, social media and start prophesying over you. <laughs> Prayerful people do not hook up with the latest gossip and start talking about you. Prayerful people don't come to you and say, hey, this is what I heard. Because none of that is in the Bible. If you have a problem with someone, they don't say, talk to somebody else. They say, go to that person. And it's time for us to either do it by the Bible or quit playing church. The reason they fell for it, and I want you to hear this, the reason they fell for it is this. 
Because they were distant from God. They quit talking to God. Because if you stop talking to God, you will follow every Tom, Dick, and Harry that said they heard from the Lord. I knew it would get quiet. It is time for us to hear from God again. How do we hear from God again? We pray, we read, we study, we meditate on his word. We can disconnect ourselves from social media. We close the door, we turn off the phone, we turn off the TV. We get in our prayer closet and we listen to God's voice. Because it is coming a time that we're going to have to go through false prophecy. And if we don't know what the word of God says, we're going to be just like the rest of them that follows them. All right, let me get to my last point. We might be able to make it by brunch. Be patient on my plan. Listen to what the God, the word of God of hope speaks to the ones in exile. I know it's going to be 70 years. I know this is not be a quick and easy transition. I know this is not where you thought you would be at this stage in life. But God says, listen, I know the thoughts that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for your life. I know plans to prosper you, to bring you a future of hope. God says, you, I don't care what you're going through. I have plans for you. No matter how dark it looks, God has a plan for you. No matter how bad the situation is, God has something up his sleeve. God is still working out some things. God is still fixing some things. Our God has a plan. And church, all faith really is, is a belief no matter how bad my situation gets, God got a plan. Our God is up to something. Our God has a purpose for the season in my life. If life is just random things that happen, we will all be miserable. Deep down inside of us, no matter how bad we have messed up, no matter how much we're in pain, no matter how much dark situation is around us, I serve a God that has a plan for me. God said it is a plan to do good. Let me speak to every devil that tries to tell you that God wants to hurt you. God only has a plan to prosper and do good in your life. God said, I will show up and perform a good word that I spoke to you. No matter how bad things get, every word I said, I'm still going to do. Even though you might feel like you're in exile, God's still going to show up and do everything he said he's going to do. I am still going to work all things out to better for your good. I am still going to make sure no weapons formed against you will prosper. I am still going to take weeping in the night and make joy come in the morning. I am still going to take your uh, crimson bloodstained sins and turn them white as snow. I am still going to make all things new in Christ Jesus. I am still going to do everything I told you I'm going to do. I have plans for your good. See, the New King James Version says to bring you a future of hope. 
But as I was studying and I was looking into the Hebrew Bible, I like what the Hebrew Bible says. It says, I'm going to bring an expected end. This really hit me because whatever you're going through this morning, God is going to bring it to end. I want you to embrace this in your spirit this morning. No matter what you are going to do, the Lord, what are you going through? The Lord says it will end. This is just the season, but just like winter, spring, summer, and fall, there's a beginning and there's an end. And God will bring your season to end. I want you to see this right now because you might be in the middle of something that you think you cannot survive anymore. But God said the end is coming. I know some of us are feeling like this thing just got started. But I'm here to tell you right now in the name of Jesus, the end is coming. See, let me prove it to you this morning. By a show of hands, is there anybody here that went through a season of life, never thought it would end, but God said it is finished and put a period on that season? Now, the ones who haven't raised their hand, look around. Your end is coming. Church, we serve a God that when we think it won't happen, God will turn the page in our life. He will end bad seasons that we're going through. He will move us out of the valley onto the mountaintop. Church, we serve a God that can end our bad season. Worship team, could you come up here for a minute or two or three or four? However long I decide to keep you up here. One of the most repeated phrases in the Bible that I'm so grateful for is the phrase, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. I want you to hear me. It didn't come to stay. I'm going to say that one more time. Whatever you're going through did not come to stay, and it came to pass. It didn't come forever. It came to pass. So while we are watching it pass, do you, baby? Be productive in your predicament. Increase while you're going through the season that you're going through. Learn to pray for those who persecute you. Because if you want to find peace in life, you pray they start having peace in life. Be aware of false prophets. And when I say be aware of false prophets, quit listening to people that say something that have not listened to the word that God spoke to them. Be patient on God's plan because God will bring everything to pass. I know a lot of us is going through some things. Sometimes we're at a point in our life where we think we cannot make it through. 
Sometimes we're trying to figure out what God wants for us to do while we're in the season. He wants you to increase while you're in your season. He wants you to pray for the ones who are persecuting you. He wants you to only listen to him and quit listening to everybody else. But the most important thing, we got to quit being in a hurry. We got to be patient on the plans of God. Because God says, I know the plans that I have for you. It's the plans to prosper you. It's the plans to do right in your life. It's the plans that make you come out stronger on the other side. Let's slow down in this microwave society. Let's start going to a God on our knees. Let's start listening to the word of God again. Let's go and say, God, I can make it through this season because I know the God of heaven. It is time for us to make it through some things. We are a dying breed called Christianity. And when I say that, there's not as many Christians as they used to be. We get discouraged. We get hurt. We go through seasons and we throw up our hands and we say, this is enough. I can't go through this. I can do well on my own, but I'm here to tell you right now that we cannot do well on our own. We have to wait on God's plan. We got to make it through. And I'm going to tell you that I know that I know that I know just as the seasons start, this too shall pass. I kept y'all long last week, so I'm going to keep you longer this week. I'm going to open up these altars. If you're going through something today, I don't care what it is. I want you to come up and get prayer. I want you to come up and cry out to God. I want you to listen to the word of the Holy Spirit, and I want you to reaffirm in your spirit whatever you're going through this too shall pass. I want you to get stronger in your faith in God. I don't want you to weary. I don't want you to tremble. I don't want you to get nervous. I want you to believe that the God that took his son out of the grave and got plans for you to prosper, the longevity, to live strength in life. God is not out here to hurt you. God is out here to bless you.
no sorrow they never can feel so lay down your burden This is what I want to do this morning. Like I said, I, I, I love slow songs, but they get tiring after a while. So we're going to end on the upbeat song, and I'm going to just ask you right, you right now, who's going through something today? Let's be honest. Who's going through something today? We're going to sing graves into gardens. And as we sing this, Let's start declaring we leaving out of the graves and going into the gardens. God has promised us a promised land. Who's ready to worship God this morning?
Lord, we come to you right now as we end this service. We thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. We thank you that even when life calls us into exile, that we feel like we're in a season that we can't get through, that we have a God that is planning on increasing us in that season. The Lord, I just ask for you to let us learn how to pray for the ones who's persecuting us. The Lord, we just ask for you to uh, help us take our ears to hear from heaven and quit listening to the false prophets. And Lord, let us all know the plan that you have for us and that we wait on your plan to prosper us, to give us strength and do good by us to Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, I'm asking for you to bless this congregation. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make this the best week of your life in his presence. The Lord give us all a safe ride home until we all meet again. In Jesus' name.